it's Lucy here, outdoor learning officer based at Abattool Farm. And today we are going to have a go at making bubbles. Um, we're also going to be talking about wildlife that create bubbles as well. So hopefully you'll learn something new. Um, and if you don't have any bubble mixture, I'm going to try and have a go at making my own bubble mixture. And also have a go at making a bubble wand or bubble sticks, whatever you would like to call them, um, to make bubbles. So enjoy! So we're going to make um, two different types of bubble wands, just in case people don't have stuff. So what you will need is some sticks, some string, some scissors to cut my string. Um, so something heavy that is metal that sort of weighs it down. So I've got a key ring hoop, a pan of washer and a metal clip. Some wire, so some garden wire. Or I did find a, um, there's actually a hook for a Christmas decoration that I've straightened out that I'm gonna have a go at turning into a little loop. That is something you can use. So first we're gonna have a go at making a bubble sticks, which is where you have two sticks, piece of string attached to them, and then another piece of string attached to the bottom. Um, this is where the washer or the heavy item comes in quite handy because you have it at the bottom which pulls it down to make your bubbles nice and big. So we're going to have a go at doing that. So something else you can have a go at doing is a bubble wand. To do this, you need to get your wire and make it into a loop, and then twist the ends to secure the loop. You don't actually have to make it into a loop if you don't want to. You can make different shapes. So we've done star ones, square ones, and triangle ones of these before. And if you can find a stick that has a hole in the middle, that is perfect because then you can thread your wire down that hole. But if not, what you can do is just twiddle the wire, so if you've got two pieces, twiddle the wire around one way, make it pulling it tight, and then the other way also pulling it tight. And there is our bubble wand. So before I make the bubble mixture, I am going to have a little think and see if I can think of any wildlife that can make their own bubbles. Can you think of any wildlife that can make their own bubbles? So I had a little think, and I can think of snails. So snails will make bubbles, and um, sometimes if they are uh, distressed or have something attacking them. So for example, if a little ant wants to get in and attack the snail. So when snails produce these foamy bubbles, it deters the ants and stops them from crawling up into their shell. Did you know, this is really, really cool, that um, ocean dwelling snails can actually create lots and lots of bubbles to turn them into a raft <laughs> so then they can move around the ocean so where they're normally at the bottom of the ocean on the floor they can then go up to the top of the ocean to um, find more food which is amazing so we don't get them in the UK but it is a very cool fact to know something else that looks like um, bubbles that you might see around you might have seen some it comes sometimes later on um, sort of late spring is something that is white and foamy and generally looks like spit and it will be on a bit of plant um, and it is something called cuckoo spit and it isn't anything to do with cuckoos the name has come from because sometimes you uh, associate that time of the year with hearing cuckoos but what it actually is is a tiny tiny little insect is hidden inside that cuckoo spit and it is a little home so that little insect is called a frog hopper so it is a little baby frog hopper there is one in each bit of foam. So what that cuckoo spit does is protects the little baby um, frog hopper from predators, so they don't know, they can't get to it. But also it keeps the plant moist and just stops it from drying out so that the little frog hopper can eat the plant for food. A, um, another type of wildlife that is my favorite, I have yet to see them when I've been pond dipping, but I do look forward to the day that I find one, is water spiders are truly amazing. They have developed, basically, they're land breathing, so they have lungs and they breathe air like us, um, but they live in ponds. So what they have done is they have developed this thing where they go to the surface, create an air bubble, and then hold it 
in their legs so that they can breathe from that air bubble and then they go down into the water and they can actually last more than a day underwater with that air bubble. So it's very, very similar to scuba divers that have an air tank and a mask and go down into the water, except from they can't last that long underwater. Where so once the air bubble runs out of air, they then will go back up to the surface to create a new air bubble and then carry on and go back down. Okay, so we're gonna have a go at making the bubble mixture. What we need is water, washing up liquid, and glycerin and then I need a bowl and I have got my measuring cups to measure the mixture as well okay, so I have made my bubble mixture and it says to stir it slowly so it doesn't bubble the mixture up and use all the bubbles in one go I've been doing that, and now I'm gonna have a test. So I've got my big bubble wand. Make sure it goes all the way in. If you have any top tips on how to make a good bubble mixture, let me know. If you can think of any other types of wildlife that uh, make bubbles, I would love to hear about it. If you have a go at making a bubble wand or bubble sticks, please, please do share a picture in the comments. Um, I'll be here for the next few hours. Stay safe and stay wild.